Harry the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Harry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The kite. Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry! Help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet, but he couldn't pull her back, so now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet. So now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet. So now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
the Canary Chicks. One day, Christopher the Canary met Chloe and they fell in love. Chloe lived in an oak tree not far away from Dolly's house. The new couple built a nest on the most beautiful branch of the tree. Berry and Dolly watched them building their nest from the ground. Look, Chloe's been sitting on the nest for days. Do you think she could be sick? The little snail asked. No, Berry, I'm sure she's going to lay eggs and they'll hatch into canary chicks, Dolly told him enthusiastically. Eggs? Chicks? Berry was confused. Of course. Chloe will lay the eggs in the nest and she'll keep them warm until they hatch, the ladybird said. A few days later, Chloe stood up and as she was arranging things in the nest, Berry noticed three tiny eggs. Three! There'll be three chicks, he said to Dolly cheerfully. One morning they heard tweeting coming from the oak tree. Hooray! The chicks have hatched, Dolly exclaimed and gave Berry a big hug. Can we take a look at them? Dolly asked Christopher excitedly. Of course you can, but please be careful. They're still very tiny, the proud daddy replied. Christopher let Berry and Dolly hop on his back and he flew them up to the nest. They're so cute, Dolly whispered. The snail and the ladybird carefully patted the baby canaries. The little birds grew very quickly and they were soon ready for flying lessons. Chloe was their teacher and they got better day by day. We've got to go and get some food. Be good, Christopher told the chicks one morning. And don't even think about flying out of the nest without us. You're still very small and you can only fly with us, Chloe added. But the smallest chick was rather naughty. Nonsense! I'm very good at flying. I'm going to try it on my own, he said and jumped out of the nest. You're not allowed! You're not allowed! tweeted the other two, but they couldn't stop him. The two chicks were hopping nervously around the nest when their parents arrived back. He flew off! Our little brother flew off! they cried. Oh dear, but he's too small. He could be in all kinds of trouble, Chloe cried. Berry and Dolly heard all the fuss and set out to find the naughty chick. They looked for him everywhere. On the hill, in the mountains, by the lake, in the forest and in the meadow. But he was nowhere to be found. Now are we going to find him when it gets dark? Chloe asked, and she started to sob. But then, little lights appeared in the sky. The fireflies had come to help them. We can make light. We'll help you find him, they said. There he is! There he is in the bush, Berry shouted suddenly, and they all ran over. The little canary had fallen asleep in the bush. He was exhausted and shivering. Chloe took him in her wings and hugged him happily. There you are. You should always do as you're told, Christopher said. Chloe flew back to the nest with her chick on her back and the fireflies danced around them like stars in the sky. The canary family were soon back together again. Good night, little chicks, Chloe whispered happily as she kept them warm under her wings. Berry and Dolly planted sunflower seeds in the spring and watered the seeds until little shoots soon appeared. The shoots grew into little plants that grew into big plants. Then buds appeared that opened into lovely yellow flowers in the summer. Hooray! 
the friends cheered when they saw the lovely flowers. Berry noticed that the flowers pointed one way in the morning and another in the afternoon. Look, Dolly, they're turning their heads. That's because they always turn to face the sun. That's why they're called sunflowers. When the sun went down, the sunflowers hung their heads and went to sleep. All the forest friends were woken the next morning by shouts of panic. Oh dear, what's happened? Our lovely sunflowers! Dolly cried. Who could have done such a terrible thing? Berry wept. Someone has chewed through the stems of our sunflowers. Flutter washed their wounds with fresh dew and Dolly bandaged them all with soft blades of grass. The sunflowers slowly started to smile again. The friends all gathered in Balthazar's house to decide what to do next. What are we going to do? Berry sobbed. Someone needs to stand guard at night. I'll go first, said Dolly bravely. The little ladybird hid quietly behind the bush and kept a close eye on the sunflowers. She didn't have to wait for very long. A hamster soon appeared and started to chew at the stems of the sunflowers. Dolly jumped out from her hiding place and shouted, Shoo! This surprised the hamster and he ran away. He didn't come back again that night. Flutter guarded the sunflowers the next night, and then Balthazar, and then Stanley. Soon it was Berry's turn. The little snail hid quietly behind the bush and waited. He waited and waited until he eventually fell asleep. He wasn't even woken by the sound of the hamster chewing at the sunflower stems. Oh dear, I must have fallen asleep. I didn't guard the sunflowers. Berry sobbed when he saw the sadly sagging sunflowers the following morning. Berry fell asleep. He slept while the hamster chewed the stems again. Why do you all look so sad? asked Dr Owl. Dolly told him what had happened to the sunflowers. I think you should talk to the hamster. Ask him not to hurt the sunflowers, Dr Owl suggested. There he is. He's asleep in the bush, Berry whispered to the others. The noise woke the sleeping hamster. The hamster looked scared of the friends and the friends felt frightened of the hamster. There's no need to be scared of us. We just wanted to ask you not to chew our sunflowers. But then, what will I eat? The hamster told them. We'll bring you plenty of apples and carrots to nibble on. Where do you live? The little snail asked. I haven't got a house of my own, the hamster said sadly. You haven't got a house? Balthazar repeated in surprise. Then we'll build you one. Dolly brought apples, Berry brought seeds, Flutter brought raisins, Balthazar brought dandelion leaves and Stanley brought carrots. My new house is really super, the hamster said with a cheery smile. And thank you so much for all the yummy food. The hamster never chewed the sunflower stems again. And they smiled happily at Berry and Dolly and all their friends for the rest of the summer.